Good afternoon. Thank you for still being awake. <laughs> <laughs> I am a superintendent of schools in the Harrison Central School District, but I want to weave my story around Judith Johnson because I spent 18 years in the, in the uh, Mount Vernon City School District, two complete polar opposites. So a low resource district, high poverty, high need, a high resource district, mostly white upper middle class. I can tell you though that the problems that plague those school districts beyond funding are the same. Poor systems of accountability, uh, weak oversight from the state education department, often disparate information that doesn't make sense in practicing in the field. But my concern today is as I listen to this debate is that you're focusing on too much and so I want to focus on what I think will make a difference to us immediately. And the answer is always funding. Because all of the good ideas that I might have had in Harrison were not going to be implemented in Mount Vernon because the resources were never there. And under the current funding structure, they will never be there. So if we want to be serious about the work of performing schools, the first and most important thing is how do we actually provide for that sound basic education that has been so shamefully neglected in my time in 35 years of public schools in, in this state. The second thing I want to say to you is that the uh, sham that's been pushed upon us, the uh, so-called annual professional performance review, is just that. It's a political solution that means nothing in the field. Uh, in 2006, the New York State School Boards Association recognized my district as having an exemplar teacher evaluation system. That was good news. Even though I was vilified and get conflicting messages from many folks that I have too much administrative oversight. The bad news is, folks, if you want us to evaluate teachers, we actually need to spend money on people to do that work. And so we need to figure out who the villain is. Secondly, I couldn't have been more disappointed in the outcome of the APPR negotiations because I saw ineptitude and intransigence on both sides. I think the uh, Commissioner of Education and the Regents fumbled the ball. Superintendents were not involved. I have been all the way to federal lawsuits when I have denied people tenure. I know what it takes to determine whether or not a teacher is effective or not. And I think the union bumbled the ball by try, trying to hold on to a model that doesn't work. So my second suggestion to decide to fix the funding is go to a five-year renewable system of tenure that takes away the whim of local politics, because I don't think teachers should have to worry about the whim of local politics, but a five-year record of academic performance that's substantive, that's based on real de demographic information about the challenges the teacher faces and the outcomes they receive can't be gerrymandered over that period of time, can't be toyed with by local politicians. Right now, what we've done is weakened my ability to remove incompetent teachers. This new system is costly and ineffective. So fix it, I can tell you how. We've given you multiple suggestions as to how to do that. The other thing I want to talk to you about, and we've uh, submitted a substantial uh, white paper you heard from Ken Mitchell before. I am the president of the Lower Hudson Council of School Superintendents. That white paper is quite comprehensive and very explicit. It has in it some things that make people uncomfortable. My career has been predicated on the idea that equity of opportunity is what public education is about. And one of the fears of one of the recommendations that we put forward is that we want you to consider moving the mandates for special education students back to the federal mandate as opposed to all of the things that have been put upon us by the state. I can assure you that the people that crafted this paper, who are all superintendents, who all serve as directors of special education, have no intention of in any way disenfranchising children from the services they need. The problem again is you have bureaucrats who don't understand the implications of their decisions hitting us in the field and driving costs that is completely out of our control. To go back to the funding, I'm in a high resource district. I'm one of three districts in the state of New York that's a triple A rating, recently renewed was three months ago in the down economy. That's sort of, I've lost $40 million in assessed value in 10 years. No amount of magic is going to fix that. And I'm working under a tax cap that has further reduced my ability to manage locally. The other thing I want to say about teacher evaluation is once you give us control of making those decisions, you will get away from the most dangerous unintended consequence of using test data to drive decision making. In my district, equity of opportunity is a reality. So I give geometry to almost my entire 10th grade. I don't look so good compared to other districts because I'm willing to give kids that opportunity. What you're saying to me is 
If I'm going to be graded on those results, I should disenfranchise those kids from the most rigorous opportunities because it might not make me look good. I think we need to be really careful about the road that we're on, and I would encourage you to engage us directly because we want you to succeed. And the one thing I'm going to close with is, is it says in your mandate, in your charge, and I pray that you do this, that you are going to dramatically reform our education system. That's what it will